I will not really speak a lot about, about informatics cultures, although we have made a long DFG project on Weltbilder of computing, so Weltbilder der Informatik, world views of computer science, but I won't talk about this today. I will more talk about the figures of women participation in computing courses. So, first I will talk about women in the history of computing, then about the gender situation in computer science studies throughout the world, yesterday and more actual, and uh, will explain or uh, interpret the reasons of the contingency as far as it is, as it is possible. But first I will mention some important women. The first was Ada, Countess of Loveless, of whom I will speak in the second part of my talk. Uh, already more than 150 years ago, Ada, Countess of Loveless, wrote programs for the computation of analytic functions on Babbage's analytical engine. Uh, in fact, programming, computing, and CS theory begin with women. Many female pioneers before World War II were mathematicians coming from Europe to the US. <clears throat> Maybe it's not so well known, but most of these first women in computing were Jewish mathematicians coming from Europe, fleeing anti-Semitism and pogroms in Ukraine and Poland, and later from 33, of course, also NS prosecution. So these first names are only one small selection, women who were yeah, entering the first uh, tries to make um, computers usable. For example, Gertrude Blanche was in the National Bureau of Standards and she also developed numeric methods for scientific computing, but already um, uh, before the establishment of computer industry. Now then, in the end of uh, World War II, um, computers were considered, well, the name computers was termed for female mathematicians, and these both on the first computer, uh, American computer, Mark I, and then the ENIAC, um, they performed numeric computations for computing differential equations for flight curves, and in England for decryption of the German code in Bletchley Park. Um, no, I have, oh, sorry, it doesn't work. The inner girls, yeah. And somehow it sticks. Okay. Okay, now again, it works. The first uh, female American admiral was Grace Murray Hopper. Hopper. She designed COBOL, she developed the first compiler, and the term bugs stems from her. Another pioneer woman connected with warfare was Hedy Lamarr. She was a Viennese actress. In the film Ecstasy, she had the first naked take. 1937, she fled her husband, Fritz Mandel, who was a weapon producer. She could not stand his jealousy and went to the US. She was considered the most beautiful woman of the world. The following citation is known. Any girl can be glamorous. All you have to do is stand still and look stupid. She also worked with film music together with George Ante, and with him she developed the frequency hopping for 16 mechanical pianos synchronizing, driven by punched cards. During World War II she wanted to fight the Germans because she was Jewish, and from her knowledge about telegraphy, which she knew from her husband, she used this technique for steering torpedoes 
which could not be tracked. This method today is used for every communication for between mobiles, radio communication, Bluetooth, mobile internet, in order to make it secure. They had a patent for it, but the US military at that time did not use it. The first programming languages in the 1950s were mainly developed by women, not only Grace Hopper, Jean Semet, who designed Fortran with other people, or Adele Goldberg, and women were very much engaged in the norming processes. Hardware development was a male task, and programming less respected was a female one. Adele Goldberg is also very well known. She invented Smalltalk with Ellen Kay. And Smalltalk still is considered as an excellent programming language, anticipating object orientation. I just want to mention one theoretician, Roger Peter from Prague. She worked in the primitive recursive functions. Uh, which are in the hall of the Ackermann function and are um, a, a big set of computable but not effectively computing, but too large for effective computing. Um, female theoreticians prevailed and still do coming from mathematics. But another way into computing is, comes from the applications e.g. Brenda Laurel, um, interface design, and so on. Now I switch to female enrollment in informatics courses. We have extremely large differences in female enrollment in computer science courses throughout different cultures and nations. There are differences between North and South, East and West, rich and poor countries, industrially developed and developing countries. Low female participation is a Western problem, not an Eastern or Southern one, nor an Arabic or Iranian or Islamic problem, even not in Saudi Arabia. In fact, both the decline of the Soviet Union and the breakdown of dictatures in Arabic countries were catastrophic for the female participation in the respective countries. In Western Europe and the US, until the end of the 60s, programming, as I already said, was a female task. Alan Turing said something for girls. With the beginning of computer science as a scientific discipline, it changed, where engineers and mathematicians found together, but still there were many women in computer science courses, and I could, um, in, in the RWTH Aachen, I could observe the decline, the steady decline. In fact, from end of the 80s, I started to collect informatics students' numbers throughout the world, wherever I could get them. It was a difficult world, also very costly, because, for example, for Italy, it costed me 79 DMARCs for the numbers of every single year. The Iranian and Arabic figures I, re figures I re received by personal contacts. I reported and pu published it at several congresses and published it in German more lengthy in 2004. So since, and the, the most remarkable finding is that with, with the introduction of home computers and PCs, software became more important. And with this came the breakdown of the female fraction. The last findings have also been discovered and published more recently by Walter Isaacson, 2014, in his book, The Innovators. Until around 2000, later mostly it became worse, in India, Malaysia, Singapore, Angola, South Africa, we had nearly equal gender distribution. In France, Italy, Spain, Portugal, Greece, Turkey, and China, between 30 and 40 percent or even more, touching also 50 percent. 
In many Arabic countries before the Arabic Spring in Iraq and Syria, in Slavic countries like Bulgaria or the former Soviet countries, Jamaica, Samoa, Malta, Mauritius, partially far more than 50% women in computer science courses. Low female numbers we always had in the Western countries, Northwestern Europe and the US. Um, I try to make understood the findings in a first um, touch. There are, for example, uh, the, the reasons are very contingent. There are structural reasons. Uh, one is the historical beginning of industrialization which, with its gender division causes differences between European Northwestern versus Romanic countries, Greece and Turkey, because the Enlightenment and rational science continues in the tr tradition of the workforce with its male identi identification. Later I will talk also about social cultural reasons. Then we have as reasons the access to universities directed partially by exams. This, is the this was the case in Arabic countries, in Bulgaria and in former Soviet Union. It was caused, so the, the stream of studies was directed, but one could choose. And uh, then it was directed according to the outcome of the performance of the women. And they were better. The role of the universities between education and research also differs throughout the various countries. And con one could say that, for example, in the Arabic countries, it's more directed to teaching and education than to scientific research. And then to income, so in South America, India, in many African countries, often it is so that only um, a, a rich part of society is able to study at all and also then can afford household and child care. But these are not the only reasons. I now turn to Germany because it's extremely interesting. Whereas in BRD, so in West Germany, the female participation went down from 24% in Aachen, I, I saw beginning in the 70s to 14% mid of the 80s and later dropped even to 8% but now it's officially up to 17%. In GDR, on the other hand, in the end of the 60s until 1986, female admissions, enrollment, and graduation in computer science varied around 60%. In the beginning, even more than 70%. I have the figures I, I wrote to all the universities uh, who, who gave me uh, figures in former DDR, and I have figures of many technical universities. One representative is the one of the University of Rostock, and here you can see how the decline with the reunion of Germany is. The decline of computer science course in these technical universities here is a result of this reunion. All people lost their jobs and could regain them. The same one or other ones according to their political in involvement and of course also to gender. But at universities it was a bit different because women were less um, involved in politi politics at the universities. West German firm firms came and employed men according to their use, and women had to leave either to the west or to remain at home. And also natu naturally child care was cut completely. They had 100% child care and then they had 3% after the reunion. Now it's going up because one sees it's a problem. Yeah? Sorry? Yes. 
earlier. Yeah. 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 It is true. It is earlier. I can't explain it. Yeah. But still. Well, there was some movement in society, of course, but it's strange that people felt something. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I can't explain it. I, I asked many people and they didn't believe it, but that's the figures I got. Um, now, today it is so or, um, that until 2004, you can see that the foreign students are shifting the numbers of women up in Germany. So you have much more female students from foreign countries than German ones. Um, we have also language differences, if I may say so, language in Switzerland. As you see, especially in business administration computing, there was an extreme difference between German, between German and French speaking parts of Switzerland. And again, we don't know what, which differences, but the language caused it. The German speaking people are Protestant and the French are of Catholic origins. So this may be an explanation which will be termed later on again. Now explanations for the European and the German speaking countries. We both have structural reasons, differing income and unemployment rates. They are really remarkable in Germany how many women are unemployed um, in, in technical and scientific subjects compared to men. And this is, of course, a filter for women and an opening for males. For the former socialist countries, again, another explanation is ready to hand. Not only the communist claim of their equal treatment of women and men and the social and ideological enforcement of women's working on the job market had a large influence. For the participation in science and technology, the specific education with polytechnic courses probably played a great role. Every pupil had to attend several years of these courses, implying working in industrial firms, thereby getting familiar with working in, in industry, and that means in technological contexts. In reunion Germany it was, and after more than 25 years, it is still very visible how much more self-confident former East German women in computer science are than former West German ones. But why is computer science less or even not gendered in Turkey, Italy, Russia, etc.? Both in the Europe, European, Latin and Slavic countries, there exist more specified gender cultures which allow the individuals of both sexes self-conscious gender identities. These cultures are performed mostly in the interaction between men and women and among the sexes of workplace. These groups confirm their members in their self-esteem as women or men. In Italy, for example, I think that andare a via and playing the games between the sexes uh, in Russia, I think the common conviction of women and men that men are incapable of on organizing, organizing everyday life, giving women a fairly, uh, um, fairly self-conscious gender identity. Whereas, yeah, okay. Therefore, in these countries, a self-respect stemming from being a woman as well as from being a man, as such, is kept up. So there is no necessity for boys or men to hold their ground, nor to compete with women, also not intellectually. Therefore, women easier can consider themselves as of equal mental power, also in subjects like informatics. And boys and men need not take up the computer in order 
to stabilize their male identity. In fact, speaking to Italian teachers, they say that considering informatics as a male subject or the computer as a male tool would be ridiculous. The borders between maleness and femaleness are well defined by gender culture. Within the Anglo-Saxon and German-speaking countries, the interaction between men and women is gendered more by hierarchy. I know this from sociology. But the making of hierarchies has to be grounded in competence and performance. Boys in mixed schools find it difficult to uphold their imagined superiority when observing the performance of girls because of the obvious appearance of contrary experience, a fact which makes them also aggressive and violent against girls. A way out is to usurp subjects as male ones, like computers, science and technology. In fact, this is what happens in German schools. Boys displace girls from the computer or put them into assistant position. Boys claim computers and programming for themselves. So what happens is the gendering of highly respected subjects like computing because the definition of gender identity is left more to contingency and to the individual. Unfortunately, this free space frequently is not used in the sense of creating an identity which includes equal value and equal rights to both sexes. As a consequence of the gendering of competence, that means leaving the low estimated competence to women, self-confidence of women as such is heavily reduced. The role of women as housewife and bewarer of ethics and culture has lost today its value. The role of women on the job market is defined by the thematically installed gender hierarchy and both end up in permanent struggle with both heavy workload and women also low self-esteem. Now I turn, I'm already in the midst of social, cultural and symbolic reasons. Uh, symbolic reasons, the scientific cultural of different countries is contingent as we saw. It is clear that in a country which founded the Royal Society, the first scientific institution in the world, science and all the connotation with ba Francis Bacon put on the male values plays a greater role than in others. It also may be argued that the older the technological uprise, the more conservative paradigms remain. Then another symbolic reason is this, the identification with the computer. In the East, the computer is identified as bureau tool, versus in the West, it works on the technological front and, and military use from the early days. The developer population, of course, designs according to its prevalences and values. And that means that gender roles are baked into software and applications. And what I uh, mentioned again in modern societies, we might see this effect that with institutionalized gender equality, the differences are constituted individually and making a gendered, up a gendered workforce. So if gender, yeah, okay, i leave that now. So I will leave you with some very crude correlations and I don't, I'm not able to interpret them, but they are somehow visible between cultures and respective traditions. On the left side, have, we have high female participation. On the right side, we have low female participation. So high east, low west, high south, low north, high communist economies, which don't, hardly don't exist anymore, capitalist economies with low participation, then turning to religion, Protestantism has low participation, 
Catholicism, Islam, and Eastern philosophies have high participation. I don't know whether the correlation is, uh, f can be filled, I don't know. Um, and late industrial development uh, with high participation and early industrial development with low female participation. Well, with this last slide, or oh, it's not the completely last slide, I'll leave you something to think. So what to do in the Northwest? Uh, this would be another lecture which I can't give today, but look at the conditions for success. They are extremely contingent. Uh, Carnegie Mellon uh, had a scientific effort with supervision then uh, 10 years ago, nearly 47% females, but it dropped after the supervision again to 31%. Stanford uh, uh, is very happy now, just it's a reason, I think, from the day before yesterday, that they have got 30%. Bremen is traditionally very high with their um, project study. Then, unfortunately, mono education is successful. And as a consequence, I would say, teachers and family training and gender studies would be urgent. And also, girls' days don't help at all. Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, so I was wondering uh, on your last slide, um, the very last line was girls, day, yeah. girls' days don't help. Can you say some more about that? Well, that's our experience. I've been involved with many, uh, with many experiments with girls' days, and um, in fact, there's very, there's very few investigations about the effects of of girls' days. But the the private empir empirical uh, uh, um, um, effect, which I saw personally, that not one of the girls who were on girls' days studied computer science or anything uh, technical. Not one. They use it as entertainment. Mostly they come from the surrounding and then, yeah. And I, I spoke with many other uh, computer science women as they say it's the same. It doesn't help. It doesn't go deep enough in society. Thank you. Thank you for your talk with very impressive work under, underlying it. Thank you very much. Um, when you mentioned um, uh, East, Eastern uh, regions being associated with high female participation, did you mention, did you mean Middle East, Arabic countries, or did you mean Far East? Yeah. Uh, I meant primarily Middle East because there the participation is higher. Sorry, also no, in far could you repeat, you said? Uh, it's, it's both. Uh -huh. In Far East, okay, India, China, we have also a higher participation than here, but it's not 50%. Exactly, yeah. Whereas the Iraqi numbers and the Syrian numbers I know and the Egyptian numbers I've re received before the troubles which came up, um, they had more than 50%. Because and China is an interesting case. It is, it is both an exam, it's a directed university system. Yes. It's a communist system. It's an, it's, it, they still have sort of Eastern uh, uh, yeah. philosophy and still they are complaining about their own low female participation numbers. I, uh, yeah, I think, uh, as I said, um, they also have a capitalist uh, economy now, and this has a lot of influence on female participation, as I would observe. Okay. Yeah. Although they are dictatory. Okay, uh, it would be interesting to compare, so now you show, you show the different numbers for computer science, 
What I'm wondering is if you would correlate this to maybe increases in other areas, because you see typically in, in, in European uh, countries that there is a, an increase in number of female students in, in certain um, disciplines where there is a dec decrease in computer science. Is there a kind of correlation and could that maybe then be used to, to explain why they choose for certain orientations? I only have the figures until 2004 or 2008. And uh, it was, in Europe, it was very striking that the numbers in all natural science subjects of the women went up and only in computer science it went down. Actually, I wanted to, fact, to, to ask the same, almost the same question about, uh, but uh, what about mathematics then? Uh, mathematics is rising. We have, in Freiburg, for example, we have 50% 50, 50 women in mathematics. And one more, my observation from, uh, because I uh, observe uh, kids when participating in, 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 in contests in, on informatics, and we notice that especially for young age, it's almost no difference. Females and male, girls and boys are interested very, when they grow, when they going to seniors, like 18, 19 years, it's a big drop. Of, yeah. of girls and uh, do you can you explain this reason or what you in fact I am uh, I as I said I've observed this until 2004 I can't say the last 10 years it I it may have changed a lot yeah I don't know this may be the question may be answered but um, I'm wondering if you think that young girls, uh, first, second, third grade, could be more excited by math and science and more um, attention put to that with them at an earlier age that would help, uh, not immediately, but in the next generation. I didn't completely understand uh, the question yet. Uh, whether I think... I, I think... I, that uh, girls, very young aged girls are, I don't know if it's still true, but I know in the past it's been true that girls were never encouraged to be uh, interested in math and science at a very young age, like uh, first, second, third grade. Uh, by the time they're in junior high school, um, they no longer feel competent and go in other directions. Yeah. Uh, what we observed and what is, has been investigated a lot is that poverty is a big break for women in science, mathematics and all these subjects. With poverty they are thinking of the role of a woman and then they take the ideological, ideology which is there in society. They take up. I, I have a friend who was the, always the best in mathematics. And when she came, when she became 14, she said, uh, she's in Freiburg, she said, do I want to be a woman? And then she actively descended in mathematics and then she was proud when she wrote a five, the last note. And said, now I'm a woman. It's incredible. So, to Two things surprise me, in particular when comparing computer science to other sciences and math. Uh, um, so the two things that surprise me are one you didn't mention and one you mentioned. So for me it, uh, it appears that the thing most reason why computer science has a, a special position is nerd culture. And nerd culture yeah. is very western and white and so it also fits somehow in this difference yeah differences between the different cultures. And the thing you mentioned that surprised me was that the, that one reason should be the, um, whether the surrounding environment is more, actually more gendered, why this should be a, a, a reason for uh, whether uh, it's more equal in like more, a less gender gap in the... In the yeah, that's a, it's a very complicated 
reasoning which I gave and therefore I also um, told it in a lengthy way. Um, it, I, I cooperated with a sociologist who uh, made a, a Swiss uh, sociologist who wrote a lot of um, papers and books about uh, the um, difference between computer science and uh, nursing. Uh, and she said that the, the, the equality or the, the legal equality of women and men and the deconstruction of uh, gender differences in institutions gives an open space for individual filling. And unfortunately, this is not filled with equal uh, values of men and women, but it is filled with prejudices which they take from former times. And uh, as you said, uh, with the nerds, of course, this is a problem, but it is a problem which arose in the last 50 years. I mean, it wasn't from the beginning. They're from the beginning. The men took up. The, this identification. Of course, this, the um, women don't like the nerds, and yeah. Okay, but, but this would. But y so you're saying that the nerd culture only came to came to exist, but also the number of women declined. So this would again fit together from from a naive point of view, at least. I don't understand the argument. <laughs> Maybe later. So, thank you to appreciate the, the amount of work underneath this. And a, a message that came through again and again is how complicated it is to try to unpack yeah. what's going on and why the yeah. differences. Um, so this is just another sort of random possibility and I just wonder about the role of the media in these different cultures in perpetuating some of the stereotypes or some of the role models. And I'm thinking back particularly I don't know, it's probably longer ago than I care to think. There was a very popular show about lawyers. Does anyone remember the name of it? Um, it was it in the 80s? It wasn't Law and Order, but it was very trendy, popular show. And Sorry, LA Law, thank you. And the enrolments in law degrees after this TV show uh, came out rose sharply mm. and I, so I just wonder about the role of the subtle role of the media in being able to influence a lot of these stereotypes and perceptions and decision making mm. that people are making. Yes, especially the games, the, the war games and shooting and all this. Of course now there also exist um, other games but they are rare compared to the other ones. Yeah. Th thank you very much um, for your talk. It was very, very interesting. Um, I think I think you're right. There's something about girls moving. I, I know you mentioned natural sciences. Girls are making very po conscious and positive decisions to move into some of the established professions like medicine and law, and now are overtaking boys in those areas. But I went. I did a presentation, and I'm used to teaching a room full of boys. Um, I think our university is about 16% at the moment, girls uh, and the rest boys. And I went to India to do a presentation and the room was filled with young women. And I asked the faculty staff there and they said that computing was a very safe profession for, for young girls to go into, that their parents uh, approved and they're the, the kind of major stakeholders in an education system where you have to pay. Um, so I thought it was interesting, very different approach. One thing um, Bertrand Meyer said earlier today was the first thing that you should really say is what, what's the problem uh, when you are writing a paper, p writing up a piece of research? What do you think the problem is with, um, with the situation as it is at the moment? What problem is it we should be thinking about solving? I didn't get the question, sorry. Do you, th do you think it's a problem? Do you think it is a problem that there are so few women in computer science? What do you yeah, think the problem it's is? It's a problem because uh, the computer scientists and the designers, um, as uh, today we heard in the ethics uh, uh, lecture, uh, they are 
designing our environment and after that they design us. Yeah? And if it's only men with their interests who design this environment, then it excludes women in a second, in a, so it enlarges the effect gradually. So, I, I was working a lot with computers, uh, women in computing. I was studying, I'm a computer scientist, come from Turkey, and being born Armenian, so there was, you know, being from, so. And then I was trying to do all these things with role models, with girls' days, whatever, and worked with older women in, in Lower Austria and successfully, but I was starting to think uh, what makes me think that women are interested, can be interested in computer science. Mm. You know, I don't know what makes me think because there are all reasons saying this is the situation, we see the numbers and we try to reason things. But what about, how, how can be sure that women would be interested in computing if all the circumstances would be different? Yeah. Well, then look at, uh, at the success. Um, and the successes uh, which I know is one Bremen and then CMU. And in Bremen they have project study from the beginning of the studies. That means they put it into context from the first semester. And the same was in CMU. They differentiated the courses according to applications and then they had 20 applications and from the beginning they, they uh, bound theory and programming languages and databases to the application and then the women were interested. Yes, and but that's the same in mathematics, you have to contextualize the teaching. But the women are already there and they worked with them, but they were interested already. They, they didn't come yeah. and you know, this, this, is, this is very useful to see. We have enough starters, uh, female starters, but they leave. Then we should, we should do something else. I 100% yeah, because, because agree it, with it, you. It, it, uh, they find, found, find it, uh, uh, was heißt langweilig? Boring, yeah. So, it seems to me that the DDR data are the ex answer to your question. The genetics of, of East German women didn't change. Yeah. Uh, but suddenly, you now with cultural changes, their interest dropped. So there is, there is apparently not an a priori reason mm. uh, why women are not interested in computer science, because they were, yeah. and suddenly they were not. The same is true for the other correlations between cultural differences. Mm. I mean, there is not enough genetic difference between uh, women from different cultures to explain their different interests in computer science. Yeah. So uh, all this points to the fact that women are potentially equally interested in computer science, but they get uh, discouraged by um, whatever factors we are now discussing. Yeah. And this is m my question is then, your talk is essentially very hopeless for us academics because you are pointing to a, a broad variety of cultural influences that are uh, very uh, far beyond our influence. So we can jump high or low and we can organize girls days till we're blue in the face but we're not going to change the culture in which we are embedded. So we are now we are at the end of your talk you leave us helpless. I'm no no I'm <laughs> I'm sorry uh, we can do only on our our place but on our place we can do a lot. And this this what you heard of CMU and Bremen. Uh, you can do that. And then you will have at your place you have have a, have a change. And this has to be done, I think. Uh, and it will gradually change society. Or if we don't do it, we will have a catastrophic development. Do we have other questions? Yes. Uh, from your criteria in general, um, the one really striking characteristic I saw there was that the more freedom of choice there was in the, in the general system, 
the fewer women were in computer science. Um, and the impression, impression I got was that actually it's not um, the fewer choices women actually have, the more of them go in computer science. Because in India, for example, I think you mentioned it or someone mentioned it, they choose computer science because it's one of the few subjects that are open to them without too many restrictions and safe workplaces and so on. So um, do you believe it's, it's a, I mean, you could say it's a good sign if, if you're a woman are in computer science because that means they have the freedom to choose what they want. Could you say that? I didn't completely understand what you said, but of course it's a problem of rich societies. In India or in other countries, um, in Greece, in Spain, um, you don't have the option that the woman remains at home. You have to earn your money and then you choose a subject where you can earn money. Of course, but of course. I, I don't believe that it's in really an, nowadays for women an option in the West to, or in rich countries to stay at home because as far as I'm aware, the participation in university studies in general is, is e mostly equal between women and men, or even slightly higher for women. No? Yeah, in computer science, of course. In computer science, not, but in, in general, in okay. academics. Then you didn't understand my talk. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I think, uh, is there a last question or no? So thank you a lot for this part, then we continue. You just heard a Cantus Firmus of the opera Ada, written in German, and this was also in German, at the time unexplained, but it will be repeated and then you will understand it. This uh, part of my lecture is more entertaining than the one before. Unfortunately, for legal reasons, it is not possible to present you more of the music because else it would be already, so to say, consumed for the staging. Uh, how comes that I, being a mathematician and computer scientist, wrote a libretto? My friend, the composer Viola Kramer, gave me the task to write a libretto about Ada, Countess of Lovelace, who said to have written the first computer program, a program for Babbage's analytical engine, which although still mechanical, had the structure of von Neumann computers. Having written about women and computing, it was not a problem thematically, but I had never written a libretto. Still, Viola was convinced that I would manage the task. She wanted me to use as many IT gadgets as possible for the stage design. I let a, read a lot of opera texts, especially one-person operas, and it turned out that similar to a graphic novel, one has to jump immediately into the scene. The text has to build up a drama and to allow musical dynamics. That means highlights and dips in quick sequence, 
and others monologues have to be designed as dialogues. Um, the four, uh, yeah, we decided that the opera should have four scenes. Each one works through the whole story, and I will report on the contents of the first two acts, and will cite parts of the libretto in the third act. The first act uh, is about her mother, Annabella, her relationship to Ada's father, Lord Byron, and her education. The second is about Ada's relationship to males, to her father, to poetry, and her combining science and poetry. The third one, and the most important one, is about mathematics, technology, computers, and programming. And the fourth one is about sickness, gambling, addictedness, and death. Her mother, uh, well, first I have to introduce a little into Ada's life in order to make understood what the libretto is about. Her mother was Annabella Milbenki. She was a very studied, rational, and mathematical trained woman, self-controlled, very religious, but also haughty. Her father, Lord Byron, was a romantic poet, very famous. They met in London, where Byron made a proposal of marriage to, the, her, to his so-called princess of parallelograms, which she first refused because of his dubious character. But then she was attracted by the famous dangerous and scandalous man and fell in love with his gloomy verses in the poem Giao. She found an excuse to marry him. She wanted to lead him onto the path of virtue. The marriage was a sensation in London and remained a journal's theme. The marriage immediately turned into a nightmare. When Annabella also found Marquis de Sade's Justine in his bookshelf, and she guessed that he continued a relationship with his half-sister Augusta in her own house, her and his daughter Medora was born shortly before Ada, she decided that he was lost to sin and gave up bettering him. She proceeded to the divorce, which was not easy for a woman at that time. From this time, she followed Byron with her hate until his and even until Ada's early death. Byron had fled her and his debts to Greece, where he died never having seen his daughter Ada. Now, which problems did I face for the stage line and for the libretto? The marital discord was termed a symbolic item in Victorianism. It was the representative arguing between the romantic spirit battling progress and the modern rational mathematical humanity in the industrialized world, with a specificity that the latter was the woman's part and the romantic one was the man's part. And it was a media event. The press jumped on the contrahands in just the same brutal and defamatory manner as it does today. Annabella called it the newspaper war, which accompanied also Ada until her death, because the British society wanted to know what would come, would be the outcome of this connection between genius, poetry, and mathematics, infidelity and jealousy, freedom and riotousness, love and hate, virtue and depravity. All this is culminating in Ada and her social environment. And in the end, I also wanted to give reference to later developments which Ada had foreseen. And this was a lot more than Babbage saw. Now the problems for the staging were mainly logistic problems. The one person concept, which we solved uh, in a way that we designed it as an oratorium like Bach's or Handel's. Then the sequence of actions in only four scenes, where every act is chronological, as I already said. And then intertwining the storyline and episteme of the time 
with images and stage design. The text has to be developed in close cooperation with the composer in order to meet the music needs, the rhythm, the drama, etc. At the same time, many new media and gadgets as possible should be used, also reproducing the previously taken tunes, scenes, images, graphic novels and buttons or tweets from social networks but also diverse media shall be used online at the opera performance, a surveillance drone, RFIDs for the entrance, the cell phones of the audience might become active, for instance, as an application with crowdsourcing for added steps. The persons and singers is the only singer, only singer on stage is Ada. She sings in present tense. And we have a lot of choirs which are taken in advance, like the recitative also taken in advance, and they also sing in present tense. We have a choir of lifted forefingers for moral voices, mother, religion, criticism and surveillance. The choir of the Furies, how Ada called the friends of her mother. The choir of poetry, arts and love. The choir of letters the choir of electricity and magnetism, and the choir of 21st and 20, uh, 20th century. And then the recitative, which sings in past tense and explains parts which are not given by the singer, singers. Here you see how I designed the stage design, and I can't go through all this. Uh, I just should show you a little how I tried to design this. Yeah, maybe just about music. Um, Ada played the harp in the late in her later age, and she sang all the time. And the theremin is a music instrument, an electronic instrument, which would be very reasonable in our context because it reacts without touching on the electromagnetic field of the player. And maybe the next for, um, slide, I can, I would uh, li line out the fourth line, which might be interesting. Like in Brecht's Beggar's Opera, ads shall hang from the ceiling, showing Bible verses, commented by the choir of lifted forefingers, or showing Bernoulli numbers or the theta function. Now I come to the acts. The first act uh, is about childhood and mother. And Annabella observed anxiously the development of her daughter. With coolness and from a distance, she met her seldom. She subdued her under a strict regime of an exactly planned education performed by child carers and house teachers and later by the Furies. With a very strict controlling education, giving science, mathematics, religion, and ethics priority, this should hinder a free development of her mind, a counterpart to any sign of her father's biological inheritance, his poetic, scandalous, and bacchanal character. There exists also a graphic novel by Sidney Padua, and here you see on the right side uh, Byron and Annabella fleeing him, and in the last, uh, Ada looking at mathematics books. The opera starts with Ada in a cage, where letters and books are reached through the holes. Surveillance cameras are installed. Ada sings, sings I can survive control and isolation in reading my mathematics books. I can gain them with Annabella's gratification cards for being a good girl. The choir of lifted forefingers threatens her with penalty cards withdrawing the books. That was the concept of her mother. Ada was a very lively child, full of fantasy, also in technical respect. Very early she was interested in geometry, architecture, biology, she read a lot and had interest in philosophy and fine arts, which she often also performed. Unfortunately, in her mother's eyes, but in fact fortunately, 
the stimulations in mathematics, science and technology did not have the anesthetic impacts on Ada. In the contrary, she was enthusiastic. She developed a flying machine and in her, her letters to her mother she used to call herself a letter bird, Ada, probably a metaphor for her wishes to be freed from the mother prison. The choir of the Furies sing surveillance, control. We are ready to punish with the greatest pleasure. And the image you see is Bart Eibling, the surveillance by BND and NSA in, yeah, in Germany. The recitative reports with 14, she became paralyzed and blind and had to be fed. She's shown in a wheelchair. Probably this was the somatic answer to her mother's prison. So it was really severe. It took more than three years until she could start to move again. But then she also started to rebel and successfully freed herself from her mother. In fact, she developed a very bold tongue and therefore often was a shocker in society. In the end of her life, when she was very sick, as a last revenge to her mother's coercion and surveillance, um, she decided to be buried to her father's family grave. Although Annabella supervised Ada until her last minute, she didn't come to her funeral because of her hate of the location. Act two is known now about men in Ada's life, her father, scientists, and for Ada men were often a possibility to flee her mother's prison. As for example her marriage, she was extremely attractive to men with her stormy and unpretentious way, her courage and her decisiveness. When the 34-year-old William King, Baron of Ockham, proposed to her, she accepted immediately at only 19 years, helping, hoping to escape her mother in vain because he was deeply subsidized to her mother. But King also entranced into the Royal Society in order to get for Ada the books and the scientific journals she wanted to read. I tried to copy her bold language, actualized Ada, always this gender shit, that I may not enter a library and the choir of the 20th century, and still this gender shit is in computing. As a wedding gift, Annabella gave her a large portrait of Lord Byron, whom she had never seen before. In King's Library, she also found her father's works, Child Harold's Pilgrimage, which starts with the sentence, Ada, my dearest child, but also Giao and Don Juan as important text showing the relation between her parents and herself mentioned. Ada realized also what she had missed up to then, poetry which reflected feelings as something acceptable even necessary to gain complete humanity. I think I'll leave this out. It shows um, the poems and the, big, uh, and the citations where he mentions Ada and, his, and uh, her mother. Now again, a citation from the libretto. Oh, how much I missed poetry and also transgression. How much I love it to shock my ambience. What a fun when they all become pale, when they listen to my dirty jerks from a tender noble woman's mouth. And how they are astonished to hear me in scientific discourse, telling about the striking new discoveries and listening to my forcing the future technical world. And then we come to act three. So. With this act, I cite more from the libretto and the stage design. The recital says she met Mary Somerville, who already made magnetic experiments, solved Diophantine equations, and computed planet tracks. With her, Ada went to Babbage's soirees, and already with 17 years, she saw the difference engine and was immediately 
enthusiastic. The recital about the difference entry says, it already reduced complexity by splitting tasks into small steps using DVD et impera, the tailorization of work, but it allowed just one determined computational flow each time a presetting is installed. Ada was also very enthusiastic about the first steam engine, and the libretto says, Pfft, and she says, hui, the steam engines are able to drag drains on trains on iron tracks. She was among the first to drive with the railway from London to Southampton. This will change the world, she says. It will turn time and space from bottom to top. And the choir of Mora says, more and more people will meet and humankind will grow together. And again, citation, that we will hear the jarring of the iron track trains, the whistling of the steam engines are heard. And Ada says, look what we have detected by now, electricity, magnetism, and the choir of electricity of ma and magnetism says, bang, and Ada, did it exist before? And the choir of electricity says, of course, lighting is whitened the heaven, and we hear it, thunder detonation. Nature produces electric lightnings, Ada, but now not only God can lighten, we humans are also capable of it. And then, Ada, we will need two timetables to change between two trains. Can we use the electric telegraphs to synchronize the clocks? We hear serping of the telegrams and Morse rhythms. And the answer to her question, the, sta the first electric watches uh, were the station clock at Paddington. <coughs> <coughs> it was the first electric railway clock of the Great Western Railway in England in November 1840. And it had standardized time arrangement applied in England, which later came into Greenwich time. Uh, the choir of electricity magnetism now shows the compass, uh, compass shows us the way to the north. As Ada also attended mesmeristic magnetic sessions. Franz Anton Mesmer's Hypnotismus Occulta was thought to be able to set psychical energies free and to heal. At that time, it was not yet possible to differentiate physical phenomena from occult ones. Similarly, 50 years later, it was blurred with the detection of the X-rays. Other, by the way, also underwent a phrenological session because her mother had undermined her self-esteem or her believing in her normality. Ada, but magnetism also introduce, in, intrudes into the human bed, body. Mesmerists are healing with magnets. The choir says, caution, caution, this is not scientifically verified. Ada, in a mesmeristic session I had a curious feeling. It was an unnatural mental and bodily sensation. I would like to understand this mechanism. And a single pointed voice says, hypnosis, hypnosis. But you see the spins of the hydrogen, hydrogen, protons, now used also for imaging in uh, the MRT. And we will project this image and rattling and bumping of the MRT is heard, caused by the radio waves stimulating the spins of the proton of the body's hydrogen atoms in order to change their directions toward the magnetic field and to measure the, the relaxation speed. Again, to the, to the Babbage's engines. When Babbage had developed further his universal, freely programmable analytical engine, Edda was excited. She understood that unlike the former difference engine, the analytical engine was able to perform variable processes independence 
of the former computation. This mechanical machine was similar to von Neumann's computer architecture, as I already said in the former. It divided memory and computational board, and the latter consisted of a small set of basic operations. Control was performed in analogy to weaving machines by chains of punched cards. Ada, I am burning for Babbage's machines. With them, I am able to connect rationality with feelings, mathematics with poetry. The happiness it gives me exceeds all other joys with marriage and children, journeys or horse riding. Babbage's machine weaves flowers into the pattern of computation, like the weaving loom into jacquard fabric. She had found the symbiosis of mathematics and poetry of mother and father in herself. Then the recital says, Ada approached Babbage to allow her to cooperate and to give her tasks. The opportunity arrived with a lecture given by Babbage in Torino, which Mena Brea, an Italian engineer and officer, had protocoled in French. Ada should translate it into English. The recital says, her work on analysis, description, and programming the analytical engine on several examples, especially on the numeric computation of Bernoulli's numbers, struck Babbage. <clears throat> he saw that Ada had completely understood his machine and its potential of programming, and even more, he proposed that, and even more, she understood more than he had understood. And he proposed that she should add her own comments on, to the translation. Ada worked on these remarks until the text was three times as long as the original one. There she did, describes in detail which problems could be solved on the machine and in which manner the operation should be organized. According to the architecture, she introduced cards for variables and operations and she developed sets of punched cards for solving different algebraic and trigonometric problems. The interplay between the cards was organized in such a way that the flow, flow of computation allowed all the possibilities of flowcharts, sequence, forking, and iteration. And she already used subprograms. Her work culminated in a program for computing the Bernoulli numbers, which Babbage had set up in his lecture, where she already uses tables and diagrams as representations. Ada dances on a flowchart, and jacquard patterns are weaved on the walls during her dancing. Now I want to have the next music. It's what you heard in the beginning is the Bernoulli numbers. Now you hear it without the music set. And wait, it's just this song. And this is what Ada computed. And now we also hear the zeta function. There is, okay.
I bring this theta function because the Riemann conjecture has connection with informatics, with the PNP problem, also with prime number theory, and it is the most important mathematical problem and is strongly connected with Bernoulli numbers. And here you see the Countess Firmus, the first page and the fourth page. Charles Babbage in 1843 wrote, forget this world and all its troubles and if possible its multitudinous charlatans, everything but the enchantress of numbers. And with the enchantress of numbers he meant Ada. But finally he f refused to work with her any longer. When she also approached Faraday to work with her, he refused as well. And the end is so tragic and sad that I want to spare you and me telling about the fourth act. Just in the end, once more, Ada, the beauty of the analytical engine is incomparable with anything else. It makes my dreams come through, combining the poetical with the mathematical. I cannot only compute with numbers, but it cannot only compute with numbers, but it also will be able to deal with letters and words, even with music notes and with music tunes, with relations and with harmonies. It is universal. It will compose music of any complexity and it will rehearse it as well. Thank you.